All right. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Stefan Halper, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you the speakers presenting about the technologies, procedures, and tools for developing and producing nanomedicine. Uh, everybody knows that uh, in everyday laboratory uh, challenges, uh, tools are uh, very, very important to analyze our nanoformulations, since by eye uh, we are very restricted in what we can judge. And the only way is to make uh, sophisticated technology work in our advantage, which can be a very difficult task. It has to be balanced in an economic field. Nobody wants to pay a fortune for an analysis to, to, uh, to work. On the other way, uh, we have had very high demands uh, to the quality and uh, the final readout of the, of the experiment. So it's my pleasure to give the word to Kelly McCabe. Um, she will introduce the microfluidizer and uh, the pros and cons that come along with it. So please, Kelly, go along. Right. Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'll just get right into it. Uh, so I'll be talking about the importance of polymer particles for drug delivery, the requirements and the manufacturing challenges that come along with uh, producing these polymer particles. Uh, I'll give a quick overview of microfluidics and the microfluidizer technology, and then I'll go into details about the, actually how to produce these polymer nanoparticles and the nanoparticles in microsphere polymer particles, which I'll probably be referring them to as NIMP particles to make it a little easier. Uh, and then I'll finally summarize everything at the end. So polymer particles are pretty exciting. They've been around for about a decade or an hour or so. And uh, they're really important because they have capabilities of delivering water-soluble proteins, such as uh, DNA, siRNA. Uh, they have controllable release profiles already, and the FDA has approved biodegradable and biocompatible uh, polymers that are available for the production of them. Uh, polymer nanoparticles are, in, are a form of injectable uh, drug, and you can encapsulate hydrophobic uh, drugs and drug combinations. They are theranostic uh, platforms, so you can have your contrasting enhancers to ensure that well, you're verifying that you are uh, delivering your active loaded ingredients into uh, the desired locations. And then your polymer microspheres are pretty exciting because they, you can uh, encapsulate hydrophilic and hydrophobic drugs in them, and they will be able to withstand. It's an oral, uh, it's orally administered, and you can, uh, it'll withstand the gastro, gastrointestinal tract. Um, is it going? Okay, there we go. So some challenges that come with creating these polymer particles include the particle size. You know that you need really small particles, but with a narrow distribution, uh, a lot of the injectables require uh, sterilization, and that's done through filtration. And uh, so that's, uh, you need 220 nanometer size particles and smaller. Um, and then scalability and reproducibility is really important for when you go from a small lab scale up into production. And the FDA requires CGMP and 21 CFR 11 compliance, as well as a clean in place and steam in place um, capabilities, excuse me. Uh, and thankfully, the microfluidizer uh, addresses all of these issues and has these capabilities on some of the scale machine, lab scale machines and the production scale machines as well. So about microfluidics, we are a, well, yeah, we are a high shear fluid processor manufacturer that uses uh, interaction chamber technology. We're not anything to do with the chip technology you may have heard of um, before. Uh, we, are, we have localized support in 47 different countries, and we mainly work in the biopharma industry, but we also work in the nutraceuticals, cosmetics, and everywhere in between, really. 
So this is a quick schematic of how the microfluidizer works. The material uh, starts here in the inlet reservoir, is drawn in through the, with the intensifier pump, and then is pushed through uh, the fixed geometry interaction chambers at constant pressures up to 30,000 PSI, which is, I think it's about 2,000 bar. And uh, the interaction chambers are our, our core technology, and they come in various shapes and sizes. Our two main uh, shapes is the Y. Uh, see, looks like an upside down Y. And that's for really processing any liquid to liquid only applications, such as uh, nanoparticles, liposomes, um, emulsions, anything like that. And then the Z type is for anything that contains solid particles. So if you're doing cell lysis or deagglomerations, defibrillations, and so on. So the, our technology is, um, it has a fixed geometry, and so scalability is quite easy, and we pretty much guarantee it. And the way we do that is putting these uh, micro channels in parallel, so all you're really doing is going from a small scale of one milliliter at a time, and you can go up to, uh, say, 15 liters per minute at a time as well. So you're just increasing that flow rate. And, okay, so we have the fixed geometry, which is really great, and it works well for us. Um, our competitors use the high-pressure homogenizer, where uh, they're focusing on constant volume, while ours is constant pressure. And as you can see that um, our technology in green uh, results in typically uh, a normal distribution at the smaller particle size, where the high-pressure homogenizer has the um, bimodal, trimodal distributions, larger particle size, and that's really due because due to the fact that our um, chambers have a fixed geometry uh, and that we're focusing on constant pressure, and so all of the material is being processed under the same conditions where that's just not the case for a high-pressure homogenizer. So how do you make these uh, polymer nanoparticles? Well, uh, in this case, so we started with a 1% of PLGA in uh, DCM, and that is added to a 2% of PVA in uh, deionized water, and then we used a rotostator to mix it, and then we're, uh, we process, processed it through the microfluidizer, and if you can tell, uh, the more passes that you put through the microfluidizer, the more translucent the material becomes. And you can also attribute that to a smaller particle size, which injectables, that's great. Uh, it's what you're looking for. And then um, in order to, uh, sorry, uh, the DCM, uh, you can't have it in your solution, obviously, so you just let it sit out at ambient temperature with the uh, vial without the caps on and you, uh, um, well, your nanoparticles will be formed after the DCM evaporates. Oop, wrong one. So for particle size analysis of these particles, you can see that uh, after one pass through the microfluidizer, the Z average is 181 nanometers, which is already uh, sterile filterable. Uh, and the more passes you do, the smaller the particle size as well, and then uh, you can see that you also have the uh, contrasting agents encapsulated in these nanoparticles. Wrong one. I'll let you just watch it for a second. Okay, so for the Nanoparticles in microsphere polymer particles, it's, it's, uh, they are formed by a double emulsion evaporation method, which is just taking the first nanoparticle into like a second step. So you start with a 1% of, oh sorry, it, um, you're diluting, not diluting, oh my goodness, sorry, uh, you're dissolving 2% of PLGA in DCM and then that is added to um, an aqueous phase that includes the PVA in the ionized water, and then you're creating that first emulsion and then processing it through the microfluidizer, and then you're taking that uh, first water and oil emulsion and adding it to a second aqueous phase, and then uh, for a total of 5% oil in water, 
And so you have a water and oil and water uh, emulsion, and that's all microfluidized, and that's where you can see uh, the particles within the particles. And so these images are taken with SEM, uh, and you can see that the, uh, so it's a smooth polymer particle on the outside, and then this is, an inter this is showing the internal structure of a NIMP particle, and you have in the inside is the hydrophilic active that is uh, encapsulated in the first aqueous phase, but if you also, you could have the hydrophobic actives encapsulated within the polymer itself as well. Uh, and this is really important to um, be able to withstand the gas, the GI tract system in the body. So to summarize, the microfluidizer is a great technology that is used to um, help produce these nanopolymer nanoparticles and um, uh, NIMP particles and anything uh, that you really want to do with them. They have smaller particles, uh, particle size than your typical rotor stator or high pressure homogenizer with a more even distribution. And uh, it's very efficient and very scalable and uh, the microfluidizer is uh, clean in place and steam in place uh, capabilities, and it is also designed for compliance of the current good manufacturing practices, as well as 21 CFR 11, Part 11 um, requirements by the FDA. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Kelly, for this comprehensive uh, overview. Um, if there is one urgent question from the audience, uh, we could take one question now, or otherwise we have some space for questions and debate at the end of uh, this session. So, if something is really urgent or not, we will move further, I guess. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Maybe, 